So near, uh, you go live. So welcome back to Israel, even virtually. Uh, you are on near. Uh, terrific. Sorry, this is not where I wanted to start. Can you hear me? Yes, beautiful. Okay, so as, as I'm getting uh, those slides up, um, I, I just wanted to thank you, um, to thank you, Ilya. Um, you're you're just being uh, terrific. It's it's uh, uh, you, you've been there. You must feel a little bit Sisyphus in the sense that you're doing that, you're doing that, and you're done. You know, and and you still you know don't feel that you have an impact. Um, for you guys to know, Ilya dragged me just before COVID to the Prime Minister of Israel office uh, to, and we spoke with the economical advisor of, uh, of the government and, um, and um, uh, you know, it's, it's just, um, so, so this is what I want to say, Ilya, it, you know, first we have to get to more people and you're doing that, but second, the first date is not enough. I find that you need to get those people three times until it clicks. What we have is a concept that people don't intuitively feel, okay? The concept that we can do something about aging. So don't be discouraged. We'll get there. And thank you for your effort. I have a, a short presentation. I want to make a, a five-minute background and then two provocations that we can discuss later. So. First of all, look, you have to remember that life expectancy of um, humans through our evolution, maybe 100,000 years, life expectancy was between 20 and 30. Um, and oh, it's only in the last 150 years, so it looks like uh, such a sharp uh, rise. We, we extended human uh, lifespan by about two, three folds. It's declining in the United States. It's 76 years uh, now, but Israel, at least for men, it's, it's and, and depending how, how do you read the data, Israeli men live the second longest uh, lifespan in the world after, after Japan. So we've been doing amazing, uh, uh, amazing things, but this deal got us age-related disease that have never been there before. People didn't die from diabetes, heart disease, uh, cancer, uh, you know, all, all, all those diseases that, that we have. And what happened to us when we get to the age of 60, we're starting to get disease after disease, treatment after treatment, accumulation of all those and bad quality of life. Listen, uh, a lot of what we've done was prevention, right? Harness the agriculture, uh, clean the water, build sewers, vaccination. So we have done this thing and we have to think uh, on prevention as a major thing, not only, but a major thing we should do. And what we are really trying to do is to create a new history. We, we don't believe we need to be stuck like that. And we have made progress, but there are three things to remember. First of all, that aging has a biology. I mean, we all know, right? We, we know here on the screen who's older and who's younger. But more important, it's this biology that drives diseases, okay? You can be born with genes for Alzheimer. You can have ApoE4 or homozygosity, which means that at age 60, 70, you have Alzheimer and you'll be dead at 80. But when you're born, you don't have cognitive decline, not at one year, not at 10 year, not at 50 year. It takes the biology of aging to bring this disease and it's true for every one of the others. But the more important point is that aging can be targeted. So it can be delayed and in some cases can be stopped and, and reversed. And as, as Aubrey said, and he had contribution to this concept, that uh, there are those hallmarks of aging, which I'm not going to tell you or talk about them, but the point of hallmark, that to be a hallmark, you have to show that something changed with aging, and that if you target that, your animals live healthier and longer. And, and 
The interesting part of those hallmarks, and you see here all the lines interconnecting them, that you don't need to change all of them to get an impact. You change one and you get effects on others. So this is something really good to start with and it has lots of uh, implication also for industry and for clinical studies and, and others. But anyhow, targeting any of those hallmarks res re result in extension of health span. And I agree that health span is really what we're, we're uh, trying to do, but also lifespan because it's kind of the, the same mechanism. If you're not going to have a disease, you're, you're going to live longer. I call it a side effect. Maybe you cannot afford it. Um, are there drugs that target the hallmark of aging? The answer is that all the drugs that we know are geotherapeutic are targeting the hallmarks of aging. In fact, if I take metformin, for example, metformin targets the, all the hallmarks of aging. And let me be very conceptual and, and, and tell you what, what's happening. If you're a true gerotherapeutic, you're doing something that takes a, an old cell or an old organ or an old body and make it younger. And if that happens, you're correcting lots of abnormalities that we can measure. And those are abnormalities that are happening to hallmarks. So here, if metformin is in, this, in the center, we don't know what it does primarily, but eventually all those hallmarks are, are changing. And from a clinical point of view, uh, with clinical studies and lots of association study, it's been shown that metformin prevents diabetes in non-diabetic, it prevents cardiovascular disease um, in diabetics, prevents uh, all, almost all age-related cancers in 250 uh, studies, um, prevents cognitive decline, and Alzheimer and prevent mortality in both uh, clinical studies and, and, and other studies. So there, there's a strong uh, literature to suggest metformin biologically does something with aging and because it's been around for so many years, um, we know there will be lots of clinical studies and association study that shows that. Also, I want to make sure that you understand that metformin has been 80 years in use. It was used primarily uh, to prevent flu in the 1920s, 1950s, uh, malaria, arthritis, and it's then that it was noted that it decreases glucose in diabetic patients. So it was kind of hijacked, but it's a generic drug, it's cheap, um, and, and if that will be uh, formally at, uh, at an aging target, a gerotherapeutics, uh, it wouldn't be expensive. In fact, healthcare providers will have benefits of using that. This is in response to somebody who said it's only for rich people. So why metformin is not approved? Metformin is not approved. By the way, anybody can repurpose metformin, and many people are, and many people are taking metformin. But uh, FDA doesn't recognize aging as a preventable condition, and because of that, healthcare providers do not have to pay their clients. And if that happens, pharmaceuticals that need a business plan will not develop other drugs, combination of drugs, and, and make it better. And that's why we are uh, launching this study that's called TAME, where we're going to take elderly people, 65 to, eight, to 79 years old, 3,000, 14 centers around the United States, and, and uh, we're going in a placebo control trial to show that we are basically changing their health. So the concept here is that uh, we don't know, we're agnostic to what disease you're going to go to get next. If, if your mother was a diabetic and you're obese, you're going to get diabetes, but it doesn't matter for us because eight Here, five minutes, five minutes. How many? Five, five, five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. So we're going to target aging and for every disease that you're going to get, uh, we'll see in time if we can prevent or, or delay and get an FDA approval, which will make the pharmaceuticals come, come over. Now, I want to end by saying that formin is not the uh, only uh, drug uh, available. Uh, sorry, so that's, that's still uh, not the end, but 
but we have uh, published this paper and you can look at it. There are at least 10 other drugs that uh, we uh, made a, 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 a lot of inquiry about and, and, and showed that there are also gerotherapeutics that can be repurposed. And metformin is actually not the, not the best one. Uh, the best one is SGLT2 inhibitors. So uh, just out of curiosity, you can go and see that any of those drugs is a potential gerotherapeutic so that when we, we have permission to go into gerotherapeutics, it will, uh, uh, you know, we have, we have a possibility. So I want to end by this concept. Our life expectancy as humans is 115 years, you know, that statistically. People have lived longer. And we die, you know, before the age of 76, a little better in Israel. So we have more potential. How can we uh, actually use this potential? Uh, this is kind of my favorite uh, family in a big study that I have, where I have 750 centenarians and their kids. Those are four siblings from one family that all of them reached above the, the age of 110. Well, what I want to make sure that you understand, and this is also in response of a previous talk, that uh, it's not only the health, the, it's not only the lifespan that increases, it's the health span that increases. So if everybody starts, this is disease-free survival, if everybody is 100% uh, uh, disease-free initially, then we uh, who don't, we're not going to be centenarians, started to accumulating disease at age 16 and age 80, very few of us don't have a major disease. Uh, but centenarians' health span is increased by 20, 30 years, and even at age 100, 30% of them then don't have a disease. So the idea of living healthier, living longer is important, uh, and there's an example, but not only that, they have a compression of morbidity, which means they die uh, without, without a, a prolonged period of disease. Uh, uh, and this has a, a huge economical value and it was shown by the CDC that the last two years of life of somebody who dies over the age of 100 is third the cost of those who die at 70. And Andrew Scott, uh, London School of Economy, said, hey, you're underestimating it because what happens to those guys who are not in the hospital? Outside of the hospital, they travel, they shop, their economical value is huge. So creating this thing is, is really very important. The uh, American Federation of Aging Research has now this initiative to target 10,000 uh, uh, families to increase the power of our funding to uh, look at all the longevity genes because there are several drugs that have been developed based on my study on other that will have a bigger impact than metformin and, and rapamycin, uh, we, ho we hope. Uh, let, me, let me actually stop, uh, stop here. Uh, thank you, thank you so much.